And we're going in five, four, three. Hello and welcome to this installment of AP Town Hall. As you guys know, we do do these about once a month. So keep checking the full sale one to see when we have the next one available for you guys to join us. If you can't be here in real time, that's fine. We always have these available for you guys to watch on demand after they happen. So if you could not attend live, please make sure you go back and watch these because they're, they're always amazing. We always have great people here to either tell you new things about software or interview people in our industry. So today I would like to welcome Laura B. Whitmore. She is a highly accomplished figure in the music industry. She has experience as a founder, producer, journalist, singer, songwriter, and senior executive, produ uh, senior executive at Positive Grid. Positive Grid is a company dedicated to the future of music technology. Laura has a wealth of knowledge and insights to share with us. She founded the Women's International Music Network, which is an organization dedicated to supporting and empowering women in the industry. She's also the producer of the She Rocks Awards, which recognizes and honors the achievements of women and music. As a journalist, she's interviewed countless musicians and artists for outlets like Parade.com. And as a musician, and her thoughts on gender equity, technology, and the future of music. If you haven't guessed, today's topic is surrounding women in the industry um, to celebrate Women's History Month. So I am Patrice Scanlon. Uh, I'm a course director here uh, for the Recording Arts Program for Portfolio and 3 for Recording Arts. And I'm very, very happy to be here with Laura. Thank you so much for being here, Laura. Yay! Thank Patrice. you. I'm excited. She's in her Cape Cod beach house right now, y'all. So watch out. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm here between two ferns. If you guys don't know the reference, look it up. All right. Um, who mentioned this thing about like when you get to a senior executive level, like people don't pat you on the back every day. They're not like telling you Amen. what a great job right. you're doing, right? Right. So she, she said, you know, make a folder and like every time somebody says something good about something you did, put it in there. And that yes. way when you're feeling kind of down, you can go back and look in the folder and be like, oh yeah, like people, people think I rock. So I love, I love that. that idea. Yes, I love yeah. that idea. And, and one other thing, this is like years and decades ago even. Okay. Um, I saw a review in the New York Times for this book called The Power of Nice. Okay. And at the time I, w I was in a very stressful job working at Chord USA. And I, somebody t asked me why I was being so bitchy. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, am I being bitchy? That's terrible. And then I saw this book and I read it and it's about, it's about in using or inserting kindness into your business world. Okay. And I thought that this book is awesome. I always recommend it to people. So check out The Power of Nice because that's, I want to put kindness into the world. So. Me too. I love that. And you know, mm -hmm. it's odd because people have this idea that being nice is a sign of weakness for some reason, right? Yeah. And I think it's time to flip the script on that. Like, yeah, well, we mean business. We're here to get it yeah. done. But kindness is something we can all extend, well, right? Because I think too, like people in business want to work with people they like, right? Yes. Like that's sort of like a general, you know, thing in the world. So if you can motivate people with kindness. No, because like you said, in this industry, we just don't unfortunately have the time to pat each other on the backs <laughs> and tell each other, you know, that was really good about this mix or this song or this yeah. idea. It's just, we need to get this out. So here is a list of 12 things we need to be changed or improved. And if you don't have thick skin, that can feel like everything you do is wrong. And that's not the case. It's just, it has to be perfect. So we're gonna yeah. focus on what needs to be improved, not, hey, this is what you did great, right? Yeah, it's really tough. And it, and it usually those moments go by really quickly. Like, oh, I love that thing you did. Now let's talk about this. You know, it's like, boom, it's gone. Already. Oh, I, I like that so, you get a, yeah. I love that thing you did before the list <laughs> comes. That's really nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm mostly thinking about marketing, which, you know, is like, you're always like, what have we done today to make people care? So, yeah. 
<laughs> I love it. So who was one of your proudest interviews? Yeah, I, you know, I've done, like you said, tons and tons of interviews over the years for all different media outlets. But one that really stands out to me was I was producing and occasionally hosting an interview series with AOL Build, okay, um, like a live stream series. And I got to interview Amy Lee from Evanescence, who I'm a big fan of. Nice. But it was really cool because she had just put out a kid's album, a children's album. What? So, I no uh, yeah, so I got to talk to her about her children's album, and it was right before Evanescence was going to go on tour, too. So um, we just had this great chat. And, you know, this question got me to thinking about, like, what makes a great interview, right? And I think it's when you really click with the interview subject and you guys just feel like you're having a conversation and it, you can, you, I always love to like start with the business pieces and then explore like something that resonates and what the person is saying and take it to like another, another place that maybe yeah. not every journalist has asked them about 20 times, you know? Right. And, yeah. and for my podcast, I do a podcast, the She Rocks podcast, and I interviewed Lindsey Sterling just a couple months ago, um, the violinist and, um, that was a great interview because we just got really deep into, you know, some of the things she really cared about. And it was a really fun, natural feeling interview. Oh, I love that. that. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. I didn't know kids, kids. Yeah. I mean, really? this was years ago, but it was, it stands out to me because she was so cool and it was. Oh, I, I love like this. I I'm going to have to go look for awesome. that. Yeah. I had no that. idea. I don't, I, I, sh I hope it's still online somewhere. <laughs> it better be on Spotify. I'm telling you. Yeah. All right, um, so what's the one thing most people don't know about you? Ooh. Oh my God, I had to really think about I this know. too because I'm so out there <laughs> talking about myself all the time. But I will say that I have recently really gotten into sewing, which is hilarious. Okay, I love this. I bought my son a sewing machine and he then he is like in Australia right now studying abroad. So okay. I was wow. like, this, this like top of the line sewing machine, I wouldn't have even bought that for myself. It's like... <laughs> It's like buying a huge, an awesome piece of gear, right? Right, right. Um, so I tried it, and I was like, this is like the Ferrari of sewing machines. I need to sew, so I've been sewing. <laughs> what, what are you making? What have you I've made? Been, I've made curtains for, like, every room. You can there we go. So now you got your little <laughs> Etsy store going, too. Now I'm like, hmm, what else can I sew? Right, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it's like the thing, like a good piece of gear can inspire you. you know? it, it, yeah, that's really true. And just like, yeah. oh, I don't want it to sit here and collect dust. I might as well make use of it. Yeah, right. I was like, oh, I should try that. Because the one I had for myself from like years ago is so terrible. And this one is, oh my gosh, it practically <laughs> does everything for you. So. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. the, the importance yeah. of a good tool, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I learned. Yeah. Splurge on the good tool. <laughs> so good and also I think you know we get so caught up in being a musician being a songwriter and just being in that world all the time I think it's really nice to be able to step out and do something else um, whether it's creative or not you know like for me personally it's um it's gardening you know like oh, getting my yeah, hands in gardening. dirt and yeah. just being like not connected to the internet and just like it helps me refocus so when I come back to the music, it, it feels yeah. fresh again, you know? Yeah, I'm with you there. I like it and in the summer when it's hot here in Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I literally will put into my calendar, jump in the ocean, like I'll block off. Yes. Half an hour and I'll just walk down the street <laughs> and jump in the ocean for like 20 minutes because you got to reset your brain. Yeah, you know? yeah. Roscoe Mitchell, yeah. the best thing he ever yeah. said to me was, Music's always gonna be there. Sometimes you just need to take a break from her, you know. Go, yeah. go paint, go garden, go cook, go sew, you know, and then come back to it. And usually, if you're like feeling stuck or kind of hit a wall, whatever that block was, you can come back to it and and feel open again. Yeah, I think it's the opposite <laughs> way too. Like you know, you're you're in business or working, and then you if you allow yourself to take like that musical break. Yep. Like, 20 minutes I'm gonna pick up my guitar like no one's gonna die if I do right that. right right and it, it really just helps like refresh everything else that you're doing so okay yeah. yeah um so what's your favorite album of all time that's a hard one yeah I'm that's sorry. a super hard one but I will say that Tapestry by Carole King is like nice yes that's like the first thing that popped into my head because when I was younger I probably played that 
a thousand Aww, times. And I love it. I was very fortunate to get to meet Carol King and spend <gasps> like half a day nice. with her. And I just love everything about her. And I saw her on TV the other day. She's like 80 something. And she's I know. still out there. Such doing, an icon, right? Doing stuff. And I just love her songwriting and. I love her. People have told me I look like her, which I'm like, that's okay. You're like, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. So I, I love her, but I also like, I listen to so much contemporary music. Um, and I like, I would just say like one album, one recent album that I really love is the Wet Legs new album, okay. which I think is really cool. And I get hit with a lot of, like people pitch me to write stories and stuff. And it's always nice when you get something that sounds really fresh and different yes. in your inbox. So wet legs, really cool stuff. All right. Thank yeah. you. You're giving me all <laughs> the homework to do. I love that. <laughs> all right. Here's a fun one, y'all. You guys ready for this one? If you could collaborate with any musician, <laughs> dead or alive, who would it be? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, of course, right after that thought, I had to think like, oh, if I could ever write with Carol King, that would be like my ultimate thing um which is which would be so cool but also like you guys probably don't know who she is but i have this friend her name's susan catanio uh -huh. and she um used to run songwriting for berkeley college of music oh great and she left to just do music and she's so awesomely cool and i love her and i would love to collaborate with her so awesome awesome putting that out in the world susan hey <laughs> yeah okay i hope you got that <laughs> All right, so what are you currently working on that you're most excited about? Yeah, I'm like gonna switch gears because I'm right now I'm really focused on two things. One is we have new product launch from Positive Grid this week. Woo. So very, very excited about that. Um, takes a lot of prep work yes. uh, to get ready for that. And I run the entire marketing team at Positive Grid. So um, we're doing a huge global launch of a, a product. Lot. It's a really exciting. Yeah project and it's fun for me to be really creative from the marketing side of my brain too so that's been really fun and then also of course i have the she rocks awards coming up next month in anaheim during the nam show on april 13th yes. so putting that all together is always fun and exciting and i always try to find something different and cool to do with the show so nice that's been, uh, my focus right now is so you just said the magic words pre-production, right? <laughs> um, so you you say you're about to launch a new product this week, but I just want to know: can we like what was the timeline? Like how long have you been working on this? Has it been like three months or? Yeah, it's probably been about four months uh -huh. of prep work for that. Like we were shooting video in January for it once we got product samples. Wow, nice. Um, you know, prepping the website, the whole thing. It's it's a, um, I'm, it's interesting because I've been with Positive Grid for three years and, and before that I, I had my own agency and they were my client for two years. So I've been working ah. them for, for, for five years. I, I feel like every time we do a product launch, like we've evolved, you know? So yes. we're very together for right. this launch and the assets we created are so cool. That's awesome. Um, I feel like we're really honed in on who we're talking to and what we're trying to say. So I'm right. I'm really yeah. excited about so it. So that's so cool. So you've you've had like multiple iterations to do this then you're saying. So that like postmortem is so important yes. to like oh. after it happens to while it's still fresh in everybody's minds, let's get yeah. together, let's talk about what worked, what we can improve upon. And then like you said, you're you're just building this wealth of knowledge yeah. so that the next time It'll be smoother, but then you'll still find out, hey, you know what? It would have been better if we did X, Y, Z. So Yeah, there's always learnings, right? There's right. always learnings. But you're right. We really we have a formal process to do that where we all get together yeah. and we take notes in a form like we had and we talk about different aspects of the product launch or the project that we did and what went right and what went wrong and what was really effective and what we could have done differently totally. next time and and you got to so catch valuable. that yeah you got to yeah. catch that right after it happens too yeah. like you can't wait a month later cuz no. then 
people You're working on something else already. Right. People <laughs> are already on the next thing. They're yeah. like, I don't want to talk about that. That's over. We already did and, that. Yeah. And right? even for the She Rocks Awards, we do it. And then when we're planning the next one, we're like, okay, like, what did we say? Like, you can go back and look at your notes from like six months ago, right? And be like, all right. Okay. What did we say last time? Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, let's not forget to do that this time. We forgot. Oh, that's doing. such a good yeah. point, too. Writing that all down. Oh, yeah. No, we write it all down. So that, all yeah. you know, if it isn't just going to be back to back to back to back to back, like you're saying there was like a six month gap, being able to yeah. go back and review those notes is critical. Um, I'm just- Yeah, you don't wanna make the same mistake twice. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to let our students know that documentation <laughs> is so important and pre-production is so important. Like I know you guys yeah. wanna get into it and get started, but I'm telling you the more time you can spend kind of ironing everything out, getting all the pieces together, it just makes the moment when you start the production or release the new product or do the interview, it's just gonna make all of that go so much more smoothly. Yeah, I mean, preparation is like, it's probably one of the most important things ever because once you launch or once you're at the event or whatever, like you're dealing with other stuff. Right. There's always unexpected things that come up. <laughs> so you wanna take the expected things and make sure those are all like sewn up, right? Amen, so that Amen. You can just be dealing with the unexpected things when they happen. Do you spend a lot of time worrying about the unexpected? I know I'm one of these people. Not really. I mean, I've okay. done this so many times that I'm like, I'm usually already in like a proactive troubleshooting mode. Okay. So I'm like, okay, what do we, what's happening that we need to fix and what can we do to fix it? And that's all I'm focused on. Yeah. I'm not I, worried about it. I'm just like, okay, what can we do? What I have a tendency to be like, all right, so if this goes wrong, then we can do this. And then if this goes wrong, we can do this. And then guess what? None of those things ever happen. But yeah. something totally I never even thought would happen is what like yeah, comes usually about. Yeah, it's something you know? unexpected. Because right. like the things you would expect, you're already prepared for. Hopefully, exactly. Right? Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love that. So I've yeah. learned don't do that because it's a waste of your time and just be prepared, like you said, for <laughs> what you can be prepared for because what you're not ever expecting to happen, it's going to happen and yeah. you just got to go through it as gracefully as possible, right? <laughs> I always felt like like anything in life, Yeah, you know, you... The, the, here's something I've learned, like yeah. even when you get to like the top level, like people don't know everything, right? Like yeah. you're always winging it to some degree, like not e everyone isn't just gonna know what to do right. all the time, but it, it's more like thinking about like, what are my resources if something does go wrong or if I need to do something and I don't know how to do it, like where can I go to figure that out, right? right? Yeah. And it's like that with production too, it's like, okay, oh no, I don't have enough guitar stands, what do I do? Like, oh no, well, this happened. Like, oh my gosh, this video didn't work, what do I do? Like, you have to just already have those resources like in your database so that you're not looking for the resource while you're looking for the solution. Exactly, you know? in the moment, live, whatever it may be, right? Yeah, we don't wanna do that, but the show must go on too, right? Yeah. So there's a, a lot of times people have no idea what you were gonna do. So exactly. You can, you can <laughs> That's another thing like I think for for newer people is never let them know that something went wrong, right? Like you can totally give it away, but if you never acknowledge yeah, that that, that video didn't happen or that light cue didn't happen, whatever it is, yeah. if you could just be cool about it, most of the time people are not gonna know that that was not Oh there. my God, I could you know? totally write a book about all the things that have gone wrong. <laughs> Let's do it. Come on. Yeah, nobody will know. <laughs> yeah. What they don't know. Okay, that's the title. Yes. Here we go. Yep. So just don't give it away. Just be like, yep, that was totally meant to happen and just keep going, right? Um, all right. So now we're going to go a little bit more long form. So you've worked a variety of roles in the music industry. How have these experiences shaped your perspective on the industry as a whole? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I, I spent 20 years at Korg USA um, working as a marketing manager there. And when I left to start my own agency, it was like a huge shift in my career. Um, and I think, I don't want to get too into it, but I was like kind of disappointed when I left Things Aww, happen, you know. I'm sorry. And, it happens like, to the best of us. Yeah, <laughs> and you always think like, oh, this is like terrible. It's the end of the world. And usually I've learned that those things are the things that are like the best thing that ever happened to you later. The they blessing bless in you. disguise, right? Yeah, blessing in disguise. Massive blessing in disguise. 
force you to realize that there's more to you than you thought and that maybe yes. you haven't set your bar high enough. And oh, I love it. Yeah. You, you accomplish like your expectation, right? And there's been several times in my career where I was put in these positions where I'm like, can I actually do this? <laughs> and you just take that leap of faith and you're like, whoa, I never, I guess I didn't set the bar high enough before because yep. like we can do so much more than we think we're capable Amen. of. And I've definitely learned that over the years. And, and I think that my experience, you know, I've been doing this for a long time now. Um, that I don't know if it's women or just people in general. Like we have a lot of self doubt. We have a lot of like, Oh, there's no like point A to point B in the music industry. Right. It's a lot of like, you know, being in the right place at the right time and just getting out there and sticking your neck out, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I always say that if you just show up, that's probably like 50% of what, create success for you because like I love it just be there I can't even tell you like how many opportunities I've had because I was there and I said hey and we just had a chat and I was like oh like yeah let's keep in touch or whatever and then I do keep in touch and then something comes up it's unbelievably powerful right that connection that you make with people so you know I'm a lot about connection and and when I think about sales even which like I everybody hates selling right <laughs> but when you know we have to sell sponsorships to create the she rocks awards and things like that but i approach it as you know what are your goals and what are my goals and what we can we do together to meet both of our goals I and like then that. it's about creating solutions it's not about trying to get somebody to buy something that they don't want you know? very good yes so that's how i think about it <laughs> i love it so yeah i mean that kind of touches on this imposter syndrome thing right and I think everybody every really musician <laughs> every songwriter every business owner mm -hmm. has those moments and has those things like oh why am I doing this I'm not yeah. good enough what why do I think I'm good enough to do this whatever that narrative is but just know youngins out there that this happens to everybody and happens don't to everybody don't feel like you are isolated on an island by yourself or i'm new at this so i'm not good at anything like you got to push through that and understand that everybody's going to feel that moment here and there um but i mean i guess the answer is practice and doing it over and over again and building your confidence, getting that feedback from other people and peers that you're doing a good job also is helpful. Um, but just know that, that that is a real thing and don't, don't feel bad if you're experiencing that because I think everybody goes through that at some point. Yeah, yeah you know? it's funny, I joined this um, like group of senior executive women in I love business, this. not just the music business yeah. out there. And, and everybody in the group was like oh yeah i feel that sometimes yeah and so it, it is a, i think it's just a human it is thing. like when you are constantly like pushed out of your comfort zone and like taking that leap of faith a lot like when you're leading yeah there's nobody showing you the way right you're right. like okay i'm trusting my gut like my gut was good before i must be okay now and like you're not always going to be right you know but yeah. you have to you have to know that everybody's doing that <laughs> yeah yeah That's sure I love it and I love yeah. that you also said you just said yes you know that's also a really good trait is like yeah, if, you're, gotta say yes. if you're in a conversation I mean I've gotten myself in those situations all the time where someone was like oh we need you know xyz to happen in this dance performance and there's no technology to do it and I'm like oh okay I'll create a max patch to make sure all that happens and then I'm like, wait a minute, I don't know how to do that, yeah. you know, but it's just like you see there's a solution that needs to be found. And I don't know, I'm just the type of person who wants to help and wants to make it happen. And then I take a step back and I'm just like, oops, I said yes to something I don't know how to do. But you're right. It's those moments where you say yes mm -hmm. and not you maybe don't know how to do it, but you have enough confidence in yourself to say, you know what, I've been in this situation before, I've made it work, so let's have, make that magic happen again, right? But I think too, like that's how when you're first starting out, you create that value in yourself, right? Totally, like if you're, yeah. If you're in that place and you see there's a need and you think you can figure it out, and you say, hey, let me give it a shot, I think I can figure this out for you. Yeah. Then 
you create that value, people are like, oh, they figured this thing out. Maybe they can figure this other thing out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't yeah. been in a situation where it failed, so I can't <laughs> really give advice on that. Totally. Yeah, that part, that part really sucks. But like I said, yeah, the yeah, yeah. are like the awesome <laughs> later looking back pivotal moments in your life. So. I don't know. Somehow, no. some way I made it work. But yeah, I can't. If it failed, I, yeah. don't, know, I don't know. All right. So let's uh, go rewind a little bit. And no. uh, let's talk about some of your earlier stages of your career. And let's focus on like maybe some of the first jobs or experiences that helped shape your professional path. And at the same time, if you could elaborate a little on your philosophy and work ethic when it comes to opportunities and ob obstacles within these examples, which we kind of just touched on, but we could probably mm -hmm. find something okay. else to go deeper on. Yeah. I mean, my first job out of college, I worked at CBS Records um, for the direct marketing um, division, which okay. was Columbia House. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. <laughs> you don't know how many CDs I got uh, for yeah. a penny. I got lots of free CDs when I worked there. <laughs> um, but I really, I mean, I wanted to be an artist when I, you know, I went into music business because it was a compromise with my parents. <gasps> I people. love this. Yes. Um, and so I started out at CBS, and I was like, oh, you know, this is just okay. I was like an assistant to a VP, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but then I, I found out about the job at Cord USA working in the marketing team, and so I switched over to Cord, and I didn't really have marketing training. I was, you know, a music business major in college um, back when that major was not common at all. Right. I was a Hofstra in New York. And, uh, and so I went back to school and I got my MBA in marketing. Wow, um, good for and you. I, and I, I was very fortunate because Cord was very invested in their people and they encouraged us to learn something every year. So I learned graphic design, nice. I did audio engineering, I learned how to be an editor, I learned how to like uh, just a million things. When you I say did. editor, what, I mean, that could refer to- Like I was the editor of their magazine. Oh, okay, so like- Yeah. Yeah, that kind so of that's editing. how I learned to write and like edit. Yeah. And then I, 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 you know, I learned how to do interview people because of that. I like, I learned so many things from being there. So I had a, my boss was a great mentor and um, I, I was very fortunate to um, just enhance my skills. So I would encourage you, like, even if you don't have somebody saying to you, like, you should learn something every year. Right. Like learning something new that just provides another piece of value to you personally, but also to the world. And it keeps it interesting, you know? Definitely. Um, and then later when I left there and started my own agency, like I used all those skills because I had different clients that had all different needs. So I would right. just do whatever, you know, they, they needed. I was a graphic designer. I was their publicist. I was, you know, their, their whole marketing team, whatever. Exactly. Was. Wow. That's yeah. Um, but I also, when I was in school, um, I worked at a recording studio for a while. I thought I wanted to be an audio engineer, so I took some audio recording classes. This is when we still used tape back in the world. Okay. <laughs> back Sorry. in the world. Yeah, yeah, back yeah. Back in the other, other world. So I think, like, you know, and then as I was working for myself, that's when I started the Women's International Music Network and the Shoe Rocks Awards. And I think what I learned from all that is you like you you start off your career thinking I want to be this thing, right? right? And it never you know, like for me it never went that way. It was such a winding road, and I think it's like what you said. A door. I came to a door, and I was like, I'm gonna say yes to this door. <laughs> and I <laughs> I learned so much about myself. I was producing a live stream series for like five years in New York wow. City. Oh, that's awesome. I was just like, that sounds fun. Let's try it. And right. Like, yeah. Nobody's there telling you what to do or telling you you can or can't do it. I was Amen. just like, I bet I could figure out how to live stream. This is like early days of live streaming. We're like multi-camera, full audio live streaming. Oh, I know, from, right? You know, I mean, from the cutting room in New York, it was complicated to figure it out, you know? Yeah. So what we're just, was, you know, there was an was, app called Livestream, right? Yeah, we didn't use that app. We used some hardware, <laughs> which was, wow. but, um, but it, it, you know, and I'm not like a, I wouldn't call myself a super technical person, although I think I have a really good understanding of like music gear and technology. Right. But, um, 
But I do think, you know, that whole like sort of positive mindset of this seems interesting to me. I'm going to give it a try. If it doesn't work out, no one's going to die. Right. You know, and I know that's that's the one thing I think we have to recognize as audio professionals. Yes, it's it's high intensity moments, but at the end of the day, we're not performing brain surgery. So yeah. no one, no one's gonna die. You know, it's no all okay. <laughs> and like you know, you said, like you said, sometimes things don't work out. But you, if you can, if you can take those learnings and like move to the next step. Yeah. Um, I think it, it, there there have been some really tough times. I'm not gonna lie. Oh but, yeah. You know, in the end, right now, I feel. I feel like I really paid my tuition for everything I learned and, <laughs> you know, being at, being at where I am at Positive Grid now and, we're, you know, just still doing my music and doing what I do for the women's group. It's like really fulfilling and fun to yeah. me and creative. So. Yeah. So I love yeah. that you said, you know, keep learning something new every year. Now, for those of you who are students right now, you're like, hey, I'm learning something new every month. You know, where do I find that time? Because it is a really condensed schedule we have here. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, you know, in the beginning, I think, like, you guys have a lot of things to focus on and learn. But I think as you move through the program, you'll start to see you get a little bit more free time. And like she's saying, in that free time, find another skill. Um, one thing I'm seeing a lot in job uh, what do you call those job requirements, you know, um, for job descriptions for, you know, jobs that are available. Not only are they looking for somebody who is audio chops, they're also looking for people who have video chops as well. So maybe that means just start opening up iMovie starts basic and small and just learn how to put video clips together. Then maybe move up to like Final Cut Pro and start using maybe a more professional or um, Premiere by Adobe is another one that's really um, useful out there. You know, just start learning some of the basics of video editing and transitions and things like that. That might open another door for you guys because then, you know, everybody in this program is going to have a lot of audio skills. How can you make yourself stand out from the audio? your peers, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just having that little added graphic design or um, or video editing, you know, just just so you have that extra little layer that maybe makes you stand out against everyone else applying for that job could be really great. Um, so very good. I love all of this. All right. So as the founder of the Women's International Music Network, what sparked you to start this organization and how has it evolved since you started it? Yeah, so um, we were launched in 2012. I was um, working, one of my clients was Guitar World Magazine. Okay, yeah. And so I was writing and editing and doing marketing for them. And, they, you know, this is like um, right when blogs were starting to become popular, they were like, hey, like, come help us think of some blog ideas for our new website. And I was like, okay, I brainstormed a bunch of ideas. And one of them was, hey, what if you, you do a blog that's focused on women who play guitar? Because, like, women weren't covered very much in that magazine. Right. I was very male-focused. Uh-huh. So they are like, oh, that's a great idea. Who can we get to write that? And I was like, hey, I'll write it, you know? So I launched a blog called Guitar Girled. And on guitarworld.com. I love it. And, uh, and I started interviewing female guitar players and women in the music industry. And that's when I really, my eyes really opened to, hey, we don't know each other. I keep hearing the same stories. Like, they thought I was the merch girl. They thought I didn't know how to plug my gear in. Like, all these things. Nice. Um, and so that, that, I sort of, like, got into that. And I said, you know, like, we need some kind of event for the women in the industry to like get to know each other. That was the first thought Amen. into my head. And, you know, I go to the NAMM show every year. It's the big trade show in the industry that I was focusing on the music year um, industry. And so I was like, oh, what if we do an event at NAMM where we just bring the women together so we can meet each other? Right. And from that, that sort of evolved into the She Rocks Awards, which started out as a breakfast, the, the cheapest meal of the day. Um, and I got some sponsors to help pay for that, and we just brought people together. Um, but as
as I was working on that event, I was thinking, oh, well, it can't just be about this one event. Like, we need, like, an organization so that it's about more than just this event. It's about this movement of empowering women, giving women a voice, um, creating opportunity, all of that. So we launched the Women's International Music Network and the She Rocks Awards at the same time and uh, and did the first of couple of events as a breakfast. And then in the third year, the NAM organization that does the trade show came to me and they were like, hey, we love the She Rocks Awards and we have this ballroom that we've outfitted for, the, for another event. I think it was the Tech Awards or some other event that they do. Um, do you want to use it for the She Rocks Awards? And I was like, I was having this breakfast of like 200 people and now they gave me a ballroom that fit like 800 people with these huge stages and like, you know, a jib wow. and the whole thing, like it was giant. And I was freaking out because I'm like, oh, I have to like, I had to like raise my budget five times as much. Oh, of as course. Was, yeah. Yeah. So that was like what I was talking about before that leap of faith moment where I was like, okay. Okay, I'm I'll say yes. This. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Like, it's like, do it Friday night and use this ballroom. And I'm like, if I don't say yes to wow. this, like, I might never have that opportunity again. Right. Ooh, that's I a was, good point. Yeah. And I was super fortunate that I, I knew somebody um, who was a record producer, who was a really good friend of mine, and he helped me so much. He was like, let me introduce you to this person, this person. I can get this person to come. I mean, we got the Bengals to come. We got, like, all these, yeah. these people you know, that I was like, okay, like, we can do this. And he, like, he was, he's actually the first per man that I gave a She Rocks Awards to because he was so oh. awesome. But, you yeah. know, the whole organization is set up to um, to share what role models of, in the industry are doing. We interview tons of women in music and audio. Um, we have podcasts. We have a video podcast. Um, we, have, we have hundreds of interviews on our website. Um, we host panels. Um, we host showcases, we have advice, like we just are kind of a hub of for what other women's organizations are doing. So the goal has really been to um, to just shine a spotlight, yes. have a bigger voice for women in the industry. And there's definitely been change Good. since, you know, we launched yeah. in 2012. It's our 11th year doing the She Rocks Awards. Wow. Um, and, you know, it's I, I can't, of course, tell you like, oh, we're good. Like we can be done. Um, there's there's always so much to do, yeah. but um, we're definitely getting more support, and people are recognizing that it's it's a really important issue, and not just about gender um, equality in the industry, but you know diversity in general. Amen. Um, it's super important. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, th I love that approach because maybe you start with just helping women understand there's other women <laughs> in this yeah. industry because you know if i yeah. i see it in my class every month i get new class every month 20 about 25 students uh this month i have one female student you know so sometimes i have none sometimes i have yeah. two so if you're that woman sitting in that classroom it could feel like oh my gosh i'm the only person here you know so i think by showing women that hey look Let's introduce each other to each other. Like there's lots of us here doing this. You're not alone. Um, and then taking that and catalyzing it. So now it's not just about these women knowing these other women are in the industry, but letting other people in the industry know yeah. that they're there. And definitely, do you think um, doing more like uh, inclusion when it comes to like socioeconomic or skin color do you feel like that is going to start being embraced in your she yeah i think it's really i think it's really important we're like very aware of it yeah i mean we we celebrate women at the she rocks awards right but we're very aware of you know racial diversity genre diversity like yep. you know all those things just to to be um, helpful in making and then gender identity itself yeah, you know they, they, everything there's yeah, a lot so, to uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot to, to unpack tackle. there but it's yeah. really important <laughs> yeah. because I mean even if you look at it from the business perspective like all those people are go. out there in the world and like, they're, they're ready to spend their money <laughs> yeah they're potential customers for you if you're not thinking about them then you're missing an opportunity amen and, and it's just dumb to not, exactly <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. it's just dumb exactly to not, to not go there so 
Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, the it, it sounds like the focus is still going to remain on women. So maybe like a, a diversity and it gender is going to remain on women. But we we I mean, before COVID happened, we were doing a lot of conversations just about diversity. It wasn't about women. Okay. Like there was yeah. Hosting a lot of and it, and even hosting panels that had diverse members on the panel. Right. Um, but always making sure that there's women. Yeah. And I think, too, it, it's like this. I mean, it's just probably part of your next question, but I'm going to say it now anyway. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> it's not easy to make sure that what you're doing has diversity. Like sometimes it requires substantial effort. Yes. You know, to find diverse people for your panel right. or, you know, diverse point of view when you're launching a campaign or whatever it is. And, you know, that's one of our roles as well. Like, people come to us mm -hmm. a lot. Hey, can you help us find some women? We want to do, we just did that with a major brand. They're like, we want to do some content that includes women. Can you help us find right. some of these types of people? And we're like, yeah, we know tons of women doing right. things all, of all types. So it requires effort and, and you know, but putting in the effort is. And also there. your your one or two organizations can't take on everything right no. so and then if you start it almost would feel like a dilution right like you're diluting it if more was included in it maybe so maybe it, maybe for those of you watching today like maybe take her her ideas and her her path and and make your own path for inclusion right. of you know uh socio equity backgrounds or uh, yeah. gender identity, um, culture, and diversity, and... Yeah, and you can't do everything, but do right. the thing that you're passionate about, because it's, it is work. Like, it, it does require, like, a lot of effort. Oh, I'm sorry, it, so. did you say you have to work, <laughs> right? Like, and that's another thing, you guys. Like, the work never stops, yeah. and the learning yeah. never stops, right? Yeah. So you got to put, you got to put in the time. Like, I wish all of you could do one banger hit and never have to work again in your life. <laughs> but, you know, I think for most of us, we're, we're going to have to, you know, put the, Put it, put it in grind and work, 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 work. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's round this off. Uh, first of all, I'm not sure, do we have any people in the audience with questions? We can start thinking about that, type it in the chat now so we can get to you guys. Also, I'd like you all to go to Laura's uh, website, which is www.the W I M as in Mark and as in Nancy.com. The W I M N. I yeah, think it's, it's on the, the FS, the full the women .com. The women, There we go. Got you. <laughs> so if you go to the full cell one page, I'm pretty sure that that link is there for you guys because on there, on her website, she's got such great advice and resources, podcasts, notes. Yeah, and you can join our newsletter and you'll. See, we'll tell you when new things come so, up. So, and yeah. and anybody can join that. You don't have to be anybody. a woman. It's free. It doesn't cost any money. So, right. I love all of that. So, you don't have to be a woman. Everybody. Yeah, and I, I mean, I would love to sit here and ask her everything today, but unfortunately, we don't have that kind of time. So, to to make sure you guys don't miss anything, please go check out that website so you guys can get so much more from Laura, because she just has a wealth of knowledge to share with you guys. All right, so do we have any Q&A from there? Okay, so I think this one's important because I think so many times someone like you or me are giving women advice on how to navigate through this industry. Um, and I think there's a lot of resources out there now for that. But I think something we could all be doing better is helping our allies, our male counterparts in the industry and give them some advice. Um, so what advice would you give to allies who are interested in supporting women in the music industry? And do you have, I mean, you did talk about that one gentleman that you gave him a She Rocks Award, mm -hmm. but maybe there's somebody else you can talk about that gave you that moment of allyship. And then that'll yeah. be our last question for today. Okay. Well, I do think, you know, we do have people approach us quite often. Oh, we love what you're doing. We want to be a part of it. How can we help? 
right? Um, and, you know, once in a while we'll have, like, a specific ask, like, oh, we need volunteers from the She Laughs Awards to do this. Like, that's really specific, right? Yeah. But a lot, a lot of the times, like, we don't know them. We don't know what their area of expertise is. Um, it is so much better for us if someone comes to us and says, hey, I'm a publicist. Like, can I do PR for you guys as my volunteer element to help you get the word out about okay. what you're doing? Or, hey, I'm an audio engineer. Like, I, you know, can I record your show for you and I'll, I'll put the finished files out? Whatever, the, whatever it is. Like, it's really hard for us to think about, like, oh, this person came to us and now we have to research who they are and think about what they could do for us. But if they came to us with an idea of, oh, hey, I'm a writer. I could, I'd love to write some blog posts for you. Like, I want to support you or I'd love to share what you're doing. Okay. Um, I'm an influencer. I have a huge following. So I think if you see somebody that you really like what they're doing, like our organization or another organization, if you can approach them with, hey, I want to be involved and I was thinking maybe I could do this for you. Okay. Um, I think that's really, really helpful because you know, like, we all do this uh, on the side. Like this is not our full-time job and we're, we're so challenged with you know, our limited resources and what we can do to make things happen. Um, you know, I think, too, like we have an advisory board that's really awesome. And a lot of times, you know, they'll help us find people to honor or they'll bring in sponsors or things like that. And that kind of stuff really helps us. I mean, of course, we always need like financial support to do what we want to do. Um, you know, I, I, I was thinking about what you said. Can you give us a specific example? And I'm going to I'm going to name a company because they've been so awesome and supportive. Okay. So. So we work a lot with Sweetwater. Nice, and yes. Sweetwater has been um, a huge supporter of what we do, and they will actually go out and bring an artist in to be honored at the She Laughs Awards, and they'll bring, they'll pay for their travel, and they'll get wow. them lined up, and they'll make sure that everything's taken care of, and they'll you know support us with a sponsorship, and they'll share through their socials what we're doing. Wow, and, that's you know huge. they they think about like oh we have these connections, we have these resources, like we're gonna do this thing. For you and it's great for them and it's great for us and i think too when you when it's approached from like a win-win for everybody like they have goals they want to reach more women they want to be supportive of women in the industry they there want you go to yeah sell to more women like it's a great you know um mutual sort of relationship so you know and and most of the people that are we're working with at sweetwater are men but they they totally get it and they love supporting us and they're they're just you know, very open-minded and, and awesome. So, you know, there's a few companies like that, Sweetwater, PRS Guitars, like Martin Guitar. Like, they're just, like... And it seems know. like a no-brainer, right? right. Because seems like, like a no-brainer. I think yeah. women are 53% of the population right now, so why would you, as a business owner, why would you try to exclude that? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think, like, if you think about, about approaching, like, you know, the, those things, and that's, a, like, a good foot in the door in some ways right. for other things, too, because, you know, we have these events, and there's, like, tons of people there that you can meet. I've always said, like, panels are a secret weapon to meet really high up people in the industry amen if you can go there in person because you can just go after and say oh i'd love to chat like can i talk to you and they'll be like yeah let's talk um but yeah i think just just thinking about it from that perspective of what can i bring to the table is there something i can do to help let me offer an idea you yes know? and and approaching it like there's something beneficial for everybody yeah, here yeah right. instead of like a lecture you know yeah. <laughs> like why aren't you doing this but instead like <laughs> Yeah. How can we all benefit? Because it's hard. I mean, we, we like we have to carve time in our lives and we right. have, you know, full time jobs and like so many things going on. So all right. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for being here with us yeah, today. It's been you. amazing. I could go on and on. I feel like we could do this another two hours. But unfortunately, we are out of time. So yes, it's my pleasure. But I will just say this: the She Rocks Awards is April thirteenth. We stream it live. Let's do so it. If you go up on the web, our, we have a website for the awards: sherocksawards.com. You can sign up, and you'll get a link to just watch it for free. Okay, live I'm there. When it happens on April thirteenth, or if you happen to be at NAM and you want to come, it is open to the public, and we sell tickets. So. Um, check it out yeah thank you thank you thank you so much laura it's been an absolute pleasure thank Keep you doing what you do we appreciate you thank you thank so you much. everyone All right. bye
Really quick, I want to sh shout out to the ABT team yes. and volunteers who have helped us put Thank this together. Thank you guys. You guys have d done a wonderful job. We did a very exciting event with someone remote and someone here, so that's always cool to see, right? Talk so about fresh ex expanding your limits of what you can do, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so great job, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.